Hey, hope you're well. Welcome to another one of my videos. This time it's just for my YouTube channel. Uh, my name is Daryl Carter. We're going to look, be looking at some Formula 1 state. We've got three weeks worth of isolation, so no better time really to get your head stuck into the form book. I just want to kind of get across how I do things. Get a lot of questions about how I do things for the form book, etc. Uh, and other bits and pieces. So this video is going to predominantly... Um, rely uh, and just be about form lines. The next video is going to be about fence by fence analysis and national hunt season, how to analyze horses, jumping fences, etc. Don't want to give everything away, obviously, but I do want to get across um, how you should be looking at form lines because a lot of people are making the same mistakes time and time again. Uh, and I've got a few different examples coming up in this video. Um, I'm also not going to call someone out as such, but I am going to play a video from what one of the presenters on Racing TV did say earlier in the season about a horse. Now, it's agged me a little bit because not a lot of time and effort went into the video, and a lot of people over the season have lost money on this particular horse, thinking that he's well handicapped, or thinking that he's going to land this big pot that this guy was certain he was going to do. But, let's start. We're going to tick off some bare form, form lines to distances, um, over tracks and trips, um, track positions and biases, and how you can relate that to the form being strong or not, um, and where to just watch out for uh, the bare form trap that a lot of people fall into. Hurdle form to chase form, can you relate it back? I'm going to explain some of that, uh, and then that will conclude this video. So, first of all, form. So, I use a pyramid based uh, scheme, as you can see. Uh, in front of you now the first form line is at the top that is the race that you've just looked at um, to see whether that form is going to work out the secondary form line is next in the pyramid uh, and this is about how horses in behind that winner are fared so how have they gone out next time and you need to keep that as close to the principles of that first form line race as you can in terms of trip in terms of ground um, in terms of track even not always the the, uh, the uh, the um, easiest thing to do. But if you can keep as close to those variables as possible, that will give you a definite outcome of how good that race was because horses need certain conditions to be at their best. So that's what you're trying to look for. You're trying to look for the horses that are beating other horses when they're at their best. Um, and that will be over a certain trip. And you can learn that through a horse's career where he's run... Um, what tracks he does like and what tracks he doesn't like, what ground he likes, what ground he doesn't like, and more importantly, what trip he likes and what trip he gets, stays, doesn't, he finds too sharp for him, etc. The third and the baseline of this pyramid, now if all these things stack up, it means it's strong form, exactly like a pyramid. Uh, the third and final baseline that I use is collateral form. Uh, collateral form lines in terms of, okay, so you've got your first form line, you're then using your second form line to work out how those others fared. And then you're using collateral form line to find out how horses from those second secondary form lines have them fared. Okay, so it's a proper in-depth um, piece to use. It will give you a very clear idea on form. Um, and collateral form is just as important as the base layer. If horses are running terribly in the collateral form lines, um, the secondary form lines won't be as strong, and that might mean that the first uh, form line is also weaker than you first thought it was. Okay, so there was a, there was a good example, actually, yesterday. Uh, there was a bumper run yesterday. Fernie Hallow was the secondary form line for Frontal Assault, who was the favourite for the bumper at Clonmel yesterday. Now, this horse was 13 to 8 favourite in the morning. He drifted out, rightly so, before the off to around 9 to 4. It was a pretty useful bumper. Um, Frontal Assault had finished third in behind um, Fernie Hallow. The second in that race had come out and won, uh, but, but Frontal Assault was beaten six and three at quarter lengths, and he was beaten very easily. Fernie Hallow won it on the bridle. Obviously, Fernie Hallow went on to win the champion bumper, so a lot of people are looking back through those form lines to try and work out the next best thing. Frontal Assault was putting it ahead of the market wrongly because the bumper was a really hot race. It was a lot of talking horses in there. Something was going to come out of that and be quite useful. It looks like we've had a useful winner there. But um, what I want to talk about is how they put him in at favourite. Now, Frontal Assault went in at favourite simply on the bare form. The bare form of finished third, finishing third behind Fernie Hallow. Now, if you go back and watch that race, you'll see how easily Fernie Hallow did it. No more than a common canter. But they put Frontal Assault in as, as favourite because they felt that was the strongest form. Now, this is where a lot of people get confused about form and form lines. Now, he was beaten. He was all out that day. He was beaten very easily. The second has come out and won. 
But the second came out and won and was receiving a stone in weight in a very weak field to another Willie Mullins horse. So the form line, the first form line there is not that strong anyway because Fernie Hallow's done it in an absolute canter. So you need to downgrade the performances of the horses in behind. The secondary form line has then gone through the horse that finished second, who went out next time receiving a stone and won. There's cracks already in that form line, the fact that he only just won that race and he was receiving a stone in weight from a five-year-old. So there's the cracks again there, um, and there's collateral form lines all over the place that suggest that the frontal assault was far too short in the market at 13 to 8. He didn't win, of course. It's, a lot of this is going to sound like half the time, but he didn't win. Uh, it's just one example of how people are using the bare form of frontal assault finishing third behind Fernie Hallow when he's done it in a very easily common canter as a reason to put him in his favourite. There was always going to be something that was going to come out of that race yesterday that was going to be much better than what final assault, uh, frontal assault was. So... That is one of the key things to look for. Just because a horse finishes behind a very, very good horse doesn't mean that horse is also a very good horse. Um, I touched on this previously as well. The Asterion Falange, Grade 1, Chanel Farmer Novice Hurdle uh, win before Cheltenham. Now, I did an extensive video on this about how his form lines are not entirely straightforward and it was he was very overpriced and overbet in the uh, Supreme Novice Hurdle. Now, I'll put that link down there. I won't go on to that again, but um, you'll see that the form lines are not was not worth the price he was at 4-1 to one in the Supreme Novice Hurdle. I'll put that link down below, but I do just want to bring up quickly on Asterion for launch um, the fact that a lot of people will now tell you that the form was actually boosted by Easy Work, who was nine lengths in second that day, uh, who went and ran in the Ballymore to finish second behind Envoy Allen. Now, there's one thing I want to make completely clear here, is that there's two differences between these races, okay? Two massive differences. One of them was over two miles, and the other was over two miles, five furlongs. One of them was on yielding ground, which is pretty much good ground. The other was on very soft ground at Cheltenham. Completely contrasting conditions. That is not a form boost for a steering on for launch. Now, the best thing you can do when looking at form lines is try and keep as much in the same bracket as you can, just like we did on the secondary form line table, the track, the trip, the ground. It all can be the same to be strong form. A horse winning over two miles, five furlongs, is not a strong form boost for a horse winning over two miles. If anything, it would suggest that the horse won over two miles, in this case, a steer on for launch, has beaten a stayer in easy work, who has done all his best work on soft ground anyway. So keep in mind, it's very, very important that you keep these form lines to the trips and to the ground conditions as best as you can. Now, obviously, there's some horses that can go on any sort of ground. They're harder to work out in terms of form line. You have to go and use the collateral form lines for that. But in terms of the top two in the pyramid, to keep that strong pyramid, which is a strong form line, all bases need to be covered. Um, so please try not to take the bare form so literally. Please do your homework uh, and go through it. Now, there is something I do want to bring up here. Uh, and this is a video of a guy called Will Smith, I believe, on Racing TV. I'm not trying to dig him out personally. But this is a video which annoys me because he's been given a platform... All season, people have lost money on this horse because he was certain that he was going to win a big handicap. Um, this horse called Not That Fuse. Um, and I'll, I'll play you the clip now and then we'll talk after it. This horse here, <laughs> Not That Fuse, um, Dan and Harry Skelton. He's rated 131 over the fences. Um, now, he is going to win a very, very good handicap novice handicap potentially race I, I am absolutely uh, sure of it you've got al dancer who's rated 151 yeah getaway trump 155 um he didn't jump that well actually not mm. that we say on the way round so it was even more notable i thought um the way he he was able to pick up on the run in and, and get so close he, he obviously um, overtook getaway trump for second position and gets so close to, to al dancer um i'd say You'll see it again here. He runs on quite mm. taking lead to the line. The novice handicap chase on the Kempton Boxing Day card would um, spring to mind Indeed. straight away. Yeah. Um, and then potentially back here for the novice handicap chase on the uh, Cheltenham's trials meeting. 
um, he's a horse that I think will will be a much better than his mark um, in time. So. Okay, so we just heard Will Smith talking there on this big platform, suggesting that he's certainly uh, going to win a big handicap. That's not that fuse because he finished behind our dancer and in front of Getaway Trump. Now, this is some lazy, lazy work, okay? I've seen a few people follow this guy, or not just this guy, but other people that have tipped up, not that fuse, and it's really lazy research. Now, you need to watch this race, because this is another thing about form lines, where race fit horses have a massive advantage over their rivals, okay? This race was at the beginning of the season. Our dancer was making his first start of the season. Getaway Trump was making his first start of the season. Not that fuse was the only race horse race fit horse in the race okay um now he said that uh, not that fuse didn't jump that well around the whole field he made two mistakes one of those came at the very very start of the race they went an absolute door door really really slow pace he was really flattered by his finishing position considering getaway trump and our dancer made so many mistakes of their fences and it was their first time out um and just because he was sandwiched in two in between two horses he was taking the bare form of that literally rather than doing the actual research and work to find out that not that few say has not won a race for the rest of the season. Now, I'm trying not to dig people out. I don't want to, but it annoys me when people get these platforms. He's an ex-cricketer. They get these sort of platforms and they don't do the serious work that a lot of us behind the scenes are doing. Um, now, you've got, you cannot be giving people false information. You need to do your work. Um, he's taken the first form line, the bare form, the literal form and ran with it. He's not looked at the secondary form lines. He's not looked at who's race fit, who's not race fit. And it's something that really grinds my gears um, and something that needs to be stamped out. And people need to call out people who are not putting the right amount of work and right amount of time into this race. If it was as easy as every horse who was rated £20 inferior of every other horse finishing within a couple of lengths, we'd all be millionaires. It's not. You've got to use the first secondary and collateral form lines to make sense of how strong a race is. Um, the next thing I just want to talk about quickly is track bias. Uh, so we just had the Cheltenham Festival recently. There is a big track bias in Cheltenham. It worked the year before, it's worked this year. Horses that are running on the inside, inside of the route, inside route on the track, on soft ground, have a significant disadvantage. Many, many winners uh, at Cheltenham came round the outside. I've got the figure somewhere. Um, came round the outside. I'm sorry, I'm gone. They came round the outside and won their races um, from a wide position. Uh, there's a few horses that are worth upgrading. And if you go onto the Racing Tips um, YouTube page, you'll see the Cheltenham Focus review that um, I've given some horses some upgrades for their performances there. But especially Cheltenham, it's worth remembering for next year that there is a huge bias when there's soft ground on those running on the inside. Many jockeys know it, many jockeys don't. Um, there was one race in particular where every horse that ran on the inside route throughout the whole of the race finished in the back half of the field. So it is really quite significant, um, especially if you like betting and running and you see your horse lining up on the inside. If they're not pulling wide, coming down the home bend, uh, they have probably exerted too much energy. So that's definitely worth having a look at. Okay, the last thing about form lines today I wanted to talk to you about is um, comparing the hurdle form to chase form. Now, there's a big, big issue here because I've seen a lot, a lot of people do it on Twitter. Um, Faki de Daudries is a perfect example, actually. Um, so Faki de Daudries was running over hurdles and he improved for fences. Okay, the key word there is he's improved for fences. So a lot of people are using his form lines over fences and using them back over hurdles. Now, you need to compare the two races, and I've done that just here. You'll see that Faki de Daudries can get in tight to his hurdles. Now, this is just a quick one example. Um, I'm not cherry picking them. This, he was like this the whole way around the punches down behind Fusey Raffles. Um, he gets in too tight to his um, hurdles and he was actually losing ground. Whereas if you watch him over a fence, he absolutely pings it and makes ground. He's a sensational jumper, he really is. He's and gonna have the wind tons of Fakir and Sam Crow is gone! Sam Crow is gone! Fakir do dairy! In the wing mirrors of Fakir and Sam Crow is gone! Sam Crow is gone! Fakir do dairy! But you cannot then use because he's improved for offence, you cannot then use that to go back and say, oh his form over hurdles must be worth following because of that. They're two contrasting disciplines. You really need to separate that. 
but the one key thing you do really want to take away from this is that jumping fences and jumping hurdles are different techniques um, so please do not try and cross those forms over treat them as separate disciplines um, horses you can sort of tell over hurdles if they're going to appreciate a fence. If they're, if they're a bigger type, they normally struggle over smaller objects a little bit, so, uh, uh, obstacles, sorry, a little bit um, awkward at times. But they do find a rhythm. And a lot of horses respect fences much more than they do hurdles. In this case, Fakir de Dowdry, he stands off his fence and he, he takes it in his stride. So um, he's a fantastic horse. He's, he's, he's going to be very good in the future. But remember, let's keep those form lines through that pyramid. Just remember the pyramid. If the first form line you're looking at looks extremely strong, go through to the second form line. If that's extremely strong, have a look at the collateral form line after that. If those form lines, they don't have to be winners, but if they are strong, if they're finishing close up, if they're running well, then that is a good sign. That will give you a strong pyramid look to your form lines. But one word of warning, never rely on the bare form of things. Uh, and if people are telling you that on these big platforms, on racing TV, etc., please ignore it and do your own research because they're not putting the amount of time and effort it actually takes to go through form lines um, and they're just waffling out rubbish. So go careful of that. Look at your form lines. Remember the three stages and uh, hopefully you might have learned just a little bit from this video. That'd be great. Uh, if you like it, like it. Thank you very much. I'll speak to you soon.